Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, everyone. Dugras here with Dugras Reports. Today, we're going to take a look back at the year 2020 in review as it relates to my credit card rewards. So in this video, we'll be looking at what was the value of my credit card reward that I personally earned in the year 2020. Please subscribe to my channel and click the thumbs up button for this video. Let's dive in. Let's start with the American Express Blue Cash Preferred. This card is a cashback card that features, among other things, 6% back on groceries up to $6,000 per year. I received $391 in cash back. I received $160 in Amex offers. And if you add that together, that's $551. I'll show you just a few details here related to the overall breakdown. Obviously, the vast majority of my cash back was from supermarkets, AKA grocery stores. Walmart online grocery does work towards that. If you wanna know more about this particular card, it's one of the ones I recommend. I'll put a card up here in the corner or you can check the description box. For more information about that, there is a refer a friend link that would support my channel. If you used it, I would really appreciate it. Uh, there's the Amex offers. I put a little proof at the end of each card. And here's some detail on the Amex offers. You'll see I had a DoorDash one where I saved $10, a Hilton where I saved $50, another DoorDash. And then there's a whole bunch of different uh, $5 ones that were part of the Shop Small promotion they did this past summer. So one of the ways you can get a lot of value out of Amex cards, American Express cards, is through their offers. Spend a certain amount on a certain thing, get a certain amount of money back. Next up, let's take a look at the American Express Blue Business Cash. This is one of those 2% cash back everywhere cards if you're a business owner. And I received $106 in cash back on this card. I received $10 in the offers, and that is a total of $116. Just showing you the cash back and how I made that Amex offer for something called BPFDMS, whatever that is. Next up, let's take a look at the City Rewards Plus card. This is a card I've been talking about getting rid of for a while, and I'll put a video up here in the corner about what I don't love about it. But anyhow, I do have it, and I used it a little bit. In 2020, I earned 5,207 thank you points. Um, I got a $19 online bonus. There was something like spend money online, you get 5% back for a period of time. And uh, that's a $71 value if you're taking it as what I consider cash equivalent, in this case, gift cards. Uh, there's that online bonus. Now I realize you can get more value out of this. Uh, I don't have a premiere or prestige. So I won't go into a lot of details. Watch that other video if that's something that interests you. In my case, the only way I can really get any kind of value out of it is with gift cards. Moving on. Jump the gun with the graphic a little, but that's okay. This is my Discover card. I've had this for a long time. Don't use it very much. $29 made this year. And most of that was in quarter two, where there was 5% back on gas, a little bit at walmart.com in quarter four. This is a card I have mostly just for my credit history. I've had this card for close to 20 years. Next up, the Capital One Quicksilver. Same thing. This card doesn't get a lot of use. Dun, dun, dun. $11 in cash back. I think I literally made one or two transactions this whole year. I paid a dental bill with the card. Um, again, this is a card that's just in my wallet for the sake of credit history. I've also had this one for around 20 years. This is my oldest credit card, so I won't be getting rid of it anytime soon. Before I go any further on this channel, we're all about finding epic value for the average American, including, but not limited to, credit card rewards. If that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe to my channel and please click the thumbs up button. Let's move on. We'll talk about the Wells Fargo Signature Visa, another card I have for mostly just credit history, but I do use it some. Uh, I've earned 6,690 GoFAR rewards so far this year, and you could take that as $67 in cash. By the way, I am rounding to the nearest whole dollar on all of these, uh, basically 1% cash back. Or if you use it for flights in their travel portal, you get a 1.5 modifier. Uh, so that'd be $100 worth of flights. Um, most of that 6,600 and go far rewards. There was a deal earlier about a grocery purchase where you got 10 X back. And then this is probably going to go up because I got a deal, uh, through the go far rewards portal that said for one gas station purchase, I can get 10 X up to 
a maximum of 4,000 GoFar rewards points. So I went to a gas station and just happened to be my first gas station purchase after putting that deal on my card was a $500 Visa gift card. So I'm thinking that 4,000 GoFar reward points are going to be coming to me soon. Hadn't posted as of the day I made this video, so didn't include it in the totals. Oh, there's the available balance as of end of last year, as of November. Do the math. That's how I got there. The U.S. Bank Cash Plus card. This is a card that is, again, one that I've had for a long time. Started as a non-rewards card. Product change into the Cash Plus earlier this year. This is a non-rotating rewards card. So there's categories of 5% cash back. Uh, I personally use it for fast food and utilities. So far this year, the only year I've had it in its current form after doing the product change, $141. Uh, I've got $10 pending. They'll show up um, in any day now. So that's a total of $151 cash back. There's my rewards earned year to date. And you'll have to take my word for it on the pending part. Next up, the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve, currently my favorite credit card. Uh, I have earned 71,709 altitude points on it, and 50,000 of that was a sign-up bonus. I got this card back in January or maybe very early February this year, met the minimum spend requirement. Um, you can take that as cash at 1%, that'd be $717, or you can use a 1.5 modifier either in the U.S. Bank portal or through their real-time rewards, and the real-time rewards are... Ah, yeah, just right. So that's a feature I really like because I like to be an independent agent when it comes to my credit card rewards. I don't want to be locked into one particular airline or one particular rental car. It's kind of a great rental car card. Won't go into a whole lot of detail. Uh, you can search a playlist on my channel. Maybe I'll put it in the description box. I really like the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve. Uh, here's some more detail how I got that figure on the Altitude Reserve. Shows my amount redeemed, the ending balance, pending, uh, and then what was transferred in. That calculates out to the 71,000 points. And in case you're wondering where that transfer in comes from, uh, that's going to be related to the next card, which is the U.S. Bank Flex Perks Gold. This is the most recent credit card I've opened. It's issued by U.S. Bank, but it's an Amex card. And so far this year, I've earned 32,989 points. Of that, $30,000 was the sign-up bonus. Uh, as you can see, I mostly open this card for the sign-up bonus. And uh, you are able to transfer those flex perk points to the Altitude Reserve. I'm thinking about making a separate video about this card, so keep an eye out for that. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. Um, you could take that as cash, $330, or you can use the U.S. Bank portal for a 1.5 modifier, $495 is travel. If you transfer it over to the Altitude Reserve, you can use the real-time rewards for 1.5 boost up as well on that one. Uh, I must have done manual calculations, so you'll have to take my word for it on that one. Amazon Prime Visa is a card I have, and I use this almost exclusively for Amazon purchases, and I've made $125 this year. Just straightforward cash back. Next up, we're going to get into my Chase cards. The Chase Sapphire Preferred I opened in, I believe it was January of this year. And I have made 74,956 ultimate reward points on that. Of that, $60,000 was a sign-up bonus. I don't do a whole lot of spending on this card. This is mostly a card I got for the sign-up bonus. And it's a card to funnel those ultimate rewards through if I'm going to a transfer partner or I can get a 1.5, excuse me, 1.25 boost in their travel portal. Now, as it relates to how to calculate those rewards, right now, Sapphire Preferred and the Sapphire Reserve both have a feature called Pay Yourself Back, where on grocery, home improvement, and I think one or two other categories that aren't coming to my mind right now, you can actually uh, get a 1.25 boost on the Sapphire Preferred if you uh, use that as a statement credit to offset those charges. So there's a really easy way to indirectly cash out. If I keep the Sapphire Preferred, I'd get that 1.25, and that would be $937 of cash back. This card will hit its anniversary, and the second annual fee in January of 2021, towards the end of the month, I believe. 
And I'm really considering, in fact, I'm just planning on upgrading this to the Sapphire Reserve because then I can get the 1.5. Uh, if I did that, the 1.5 boost, I would get $1,124. And I can do that for the rest of my chase cards as well. I'll come back to that a little later, but there's the Sapphire Preferred. There's the little graphic showing how I earned it. Moving on, sticking with the Chase family, we have the Chase Inc. Business Preferred. I put unlimited in parentheses because partway through this year, I product change. I got the Inc. Business Preferred, paid the $95 annual fee in 2019. When I hit my one-year anniversary in the summer of this year, I product changed it to the uh, annual fee free Chase Inc. Business Unlimited. So um 8971 ultimate reward points were earned this year not a lot uh same info if i use the pay myself back with the 1.25 i get 112 dollars. the 1.5 i get 135 dollars. i don't have a graphic for this one because you'll have to take my word for it when you product change the ultimate rewards portal doesn't show you what happened prior to that product change so i had to do the math myself using statements Still in the Chase family, I have four total ultimate reward earning cards. The Chase Inc. Business Cash, this is the one that gets 5% back, which is 5x ultimate reward points on office supply stores, cell phone, cable internet, etc. Um, 80,248 UR points were earned this year. Of that, $50,000 was the sign-up bonus. And if I cash that out, it's either $1,003 or $1,204, depending on whether I use the Sapphire Preferred to cash out or I product change the Sapphire Reserve. Uh, that shows how I'm getting that number. And my last Chase Ultimate Reward Earning card is the Chase Freedom. I opened this before the Freedom Flex came along, although it's the same idea. Um, rotating 5% categories. I have earned 68,755 ultimate reward points this year on that card. Of that, 20,000 was the sign-up bonus. 30,000 was a refer-a-friend credit from three different referrals because it's 10,000 points per referral. I referred my wife for a Freedom Unlimited, my dad for a Freedom Unlimited, and there must have been one other, but I don't remember what it was. Um, so, $859 if I take the 1.25x, if I upgrade to the reserve and cash out using the pay myself back, $1,031. There's how I got to that number. So let's total up the four different ultimate reward earning cards from Chase that I have before we get to the total total. And that comes to 232,930 ultimate reward points. Uh, that would be $2,912 if I don't change my card setup right now and just cash out all of that through the Sapphire Preferred that I have. If I upgrade to the Sapphire Reserve and pay myself back at 1.5x at grocery stores, and yes, grocery stores do sell Visa gift cards, uh, that would be $3,494. And it could be even more than that if I use partners. The only partners I've ever used with Chase are... Um, I use Southwest Airlines just a little bit, and I've used Hyatt a couple times. Um, so I realized that you can earn more than that. I think the pay myself back at 1.5 is my most likely bet to happen. To get a fair notation of how much you've earned in a year, you have to subtract out any annual fees you pay. Otherwise, you're only looking at the gross and not the net. The Blue Cash Preferred, $95 annual fee. The Altitude Reserve has a $75 net annual fee. What I mean by that is the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve has a $400 annual fee. They give you a $325 credit for any spending on travel or temporarily during the coronavirus era uh, dining. And I used that before Corona. We went on a trip in February and I already knocked that off. So on a net basis, a $75 annual fee. Um, the Flex Perks Gold from U.S. Bank, $85 annual fee. And the Sapphire Preferred has a $95 annual fee. So those are the annual fees I've paid so far this year, totaling $350. Now the real drum roll for the overall total. In 2020, I made $5,080 or $4,730 on the low end, assuming I don't upgrade to the reserve, assuming that I don't use the travel portal for some of those where there was two different values. I made at least that much. But more realistically, $6,219, uh, 
on the high end, that's assuming I upgrade to the reserve, which I'm planning to do unless I hit a roadblock, and I use my altitude reserve for travel. That's $5,869 on a net basis. Wow, $5,869 just for managing $350 worth of credit cards. And I'm a pretty average guy. I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I do have a couple channels, but I work a regular old office job. So, you know, family, wife, two kids, pretty typical middle-class American spending. That's hard to pass up, $5,869, which would go towards travel or whatever. Now, I've already used some of that, not all of it. If we think of like Chase, uh, between my current balance and my wife's very small balance, we have about 200000 So we have some ultimate rewards we can still use for travel. I've got about half of my available rewards on the altitude reserve. So there'll be some travel coming in 2021. Cross your fingers, knock on wood. But again, I've already used some of that. I'll do a brief review of how credit card rewards can really make my life more enjoyable. Uh, back in February, the last week of February, like right before coronavirus became a thing and shut down the country, uh, my family took a week-long vacation to northern Arizona around Page in the Grand Canyon. And that was just a great time together. Ah, just the best family vacation I've ever taken. It was wonderful. So glad we got it done before Rona. And then in the middle of summer, last week in July, lapped in the first couple of days of August, my family took kind of a COVID vacation where we did a lot of social distancing. Uh, we drove from our home in Iowa, rented a car, went down to um, central Arkansas at a place called Fairfield Bay, did a lot of swimming, mini golf, disc golf, fishing, uh, a lot of outdoor activity. And then we stayed in a Wyndham resort that was like a condo, had the whole thing to ourselves. We're able to cook in our room, those kinds of things. So that was a great break from the craziness of coronavirus, just sticking with our four person family pod. And then I personally, just me, took a long weekend, four day weekend getaway to Kaskaskia, Illinois, which is a little tiny historic town. Uh, and I saw some other attractions right along the uh, border of Illinois and Missouri, kind of south of St. Louis area and around that area. Top left, you'll see the Daniel Boone home in Missouri. Uh, I'm kind of a geek. I like historical things. Um, so if you ever see like a Driving with Dugras video on my channel, that's part of the reason why. So all that to say, I have made good use of those ultimate rewards. In all three of those vacations, I paid nothing for my lodging. I paid nothing for my rental car. And on the ones that involved airfare, I paid nothing out of pocket for my tickets. Uh, through a combination of points and cash back, those were all covered. So basically, the three vacations I've taken this year, all domestic, that's kind of my style. Um, the only expense I've had is food and incidentals, and that's pretty much it. In fact, my Arizona vacation, I did a video about how there are some incidentals. Free travel is not really free, but at a greatly reduced cost. Check the card up in the corner or the description box for more info on that video if you're interested. So I'll ask you, what's your success story? If you care to share how many points, cash back, rewards you've made in 2020, put a comment down below. I'd really appreciate that. And if you appreciate videos like this or have a suggestion for my next one, uh, please subscribe to this channel. Please comment. I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And as always, may your spending be frugal and may your points be plenteous. Catch you later.